from Africa, uh, one of his trips over there, he brought an African back with him. I'll never forget that. And as he brought the African back with him, I was sitting out talking to the African uh, man here, and he made a statement. He, he looked at me and he looked at Dan Post and he said, Pastor, he said his face is white. But he said his heart is black. And I'll never forget the way he said that, that he had a love for those people that were over there, loved them with all of his heart. And I thought about David Livingstone. David Livingstone, they... Uh, buried his heart in Africa. They took his body back to England, but the native Africans, they took his heart out and they buried it in an unknown place to where nobody would ever find it because his heart was in Africa. Amen. Thank God for these missionaries. All right, Psalm 105. All right, We're getting into a little worship with them now. You know, most of the Psalms about being in trouble all the time, right? You say, why? Because you spend more time in trouble than you spend out of it as a general rule. And that's just the way life is, folks. Life's tough. Life's hard. Let me see if I got that thing on. I dealt it. I dealt it. Now I've got it on me, man. Now life's hard. So most of the Psalms are about being in trouble, what God does to get you out of trouble and coming out light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. I thank the Lord for that. Uh, God knows what we need. You know, even in the preaching of the Word of God, he said, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and re exhort. Three things, and the exhortation was just one-third of it. Reproving and rebuking were two-thirds of it. But he said to do it with all long-suffering and doctrine. So that's part of what it is. So what we get, we get a whole lot of hard times here. We get some good times here. When you take Psalm 105... I just want to read verse number one. Then we're going to kind of skip down a little bit. But he said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. So what we're going to do, we're going to just go down and read the last part of this. Why? What he's doing, he's going to give thanks for what God has done uh, in the past for him. And I think that's a good thing to do. We think about thanksgiving uh, we bless the Lord. Uh, I love Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all of His benefits. Who uh, forgiveth all thine iniquity, healeth all thy diseases. It goes down through a list of things. And I think it's good sometime to count your blessings. We find here the psalmist as he's counting blessings. I find no introduction to the psalm. I'm not sure tonight if it's a song of David or a song of Asaph or what type of a psalm that it is. But he starts out and he talks about the things, the deeds that God has done. Now, when you get down to verse number 9, verse 8 said he remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. Now, what he did, he goes back to what's called the fathers of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he's showing the people what God has done for them, and then he's going to bring this thing up to their time frame to just show them how good that God has been in the past. So he's talking about the covenant that he made with Abraham, his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. You find three different individuals here. One, Abraham. With Abraham, he confirmed a covenant. Chapter number 12, chapter 15, chapter 17, the book of Genesis. You find the promise of the seed. You find the Palestinian or the land covenant that he made. He made a lot of covenants with Abraham. Abraham was the first Jew our first Hebrew. He, he, the Hebrew just simply means a pilgrimer. One that is just simply traveling through. You get to the book of Hebrews, it said that he just dwelled in tents. But it said that he looked for a building or a city with foundations whose builder and maker was God. So he was looking on beyond these promises to what God was going to do for him. But we find his promises to one Abraham, and then he confirmed it, or the covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. 
He told Isaac, he said, you're going to have a miracle son. You're going to have a miracle birth. You're going, to, you're going to have sons, and you're going to have two of these sons, and they're going to be born, and the elder will serve the younger. And he made an oath unto him about concerning that covenant. When you get to verse number 11, he said he confirmed it unto Jacob for a law, unto Israel for an everlasting covenant. Now, here's what he did. Now, this is what he's writing about. He said, saying unto thee, verse number 11, will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few and with strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land. He brake the whole staff of the bread. He sent a man before him, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came and the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free and made him lord over of his house and ruler over all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure, to teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came unto Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham, and he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than the enemies, their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal suddenly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen and showed his signs among them and his wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. He spake, and there came divers sorts of flies and lice in all their coast. He gave them hell for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also on their fig trees and brake the trees of their coast. He spake, and the locusts came and the caterpillars, and that without number did eat up all the herbs of their land and devoured the fruit of their ground. He smote also all the firstborn in their land, the chief of all their strength. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out. They ran in dry, the dry places like a river, for he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness and gave them the lands of the heathen. They inherited the labor of the people that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. He's looking back over the history of Israel. Israel lived a hard time. Abraham had a hard time. Je Isaac had a hard time. Jacob had a hard time. Israel, 430 years they spent in Egypt with 350 of those years they flourished and then in 80 years they suffered. He talked about a man by the name of Joseph. Joseph, when he went down, sold into slavery. They had his uh, legs in fetters and irons. They put him in shackles and tied him up and <laughs> him on this slave block and boy Joseph what a man of God Joseph was but God was with that young man Joseph when he went down was 16 or 17 years of age when he went down to Egypt he was about 39 years of age when he finally stood before uh, Pharaoh and was lifted up and God blessed that man and blessed the land of Israel he brought them through the desert he sustained them and gave them his promise. Now when you get to Psalms 105, what's about? It's a psalm of worship. I want to look at that just for a few minutes tonight. You know, sometimes in our worship, we think worship is just singing songs and all this type. But you know, sometimes worship is a remembrance. 
is remembering what God's done. Worshiping God not only for who he is, but to worship God for what he has done and then knowing that he has the ability to do exceeding abundantly above. I like that verse of scripture. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. Boy, look, look, look how he put that according to the power that worketh in you. What's he talking about? He's talking about prayer. He's talking about praying. Worship has a lot to do with prayer. So what I want to do is break this down in a few moments. And the last days we live in, listen, you've got people, they don't want to hear about God anymore. Don't want to think about God. We read about that in Psalm chapter 14. He does that again in Psalms, I think it's Psalms chapter 53 or somewhere. He uses that terminology again. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. If you can look out here tonight and not know there's a God, the Bible says you're a fool. I don't want to get into that tonight. When we get into Psalms 9, I may deal with it a little bit uh, uh, longer in that thing where it says that the heavens declare the glory of God and affirm that His handiwork. He talks about day into day, night into night. There's no place where their language is not heard. Listen, we serve a God tonight that can take care of your problems. You need to learn to bring them to the Lord. Bring your burdens to the Lord. Bring them there. He will sustain you with him. I thank God for that. But I want to look at some things that he did. I don't want to deal with the fools so much tonight. But the children of God witnessed the things in verse number one. He witnessed the things that God had done. And then he witnessed to other people about the things he had done. But he did that in the way of worship. So I want to break it down real quick. His worship one involved thanks. Thanks. Thanks be unto God tonight for His goodness. Thanks be unto God tonight for, for all that He's done for us. When you come to church, come in with a thankful heart. Psalms 100 dealt with that. He said, come into His gates with praise and into His courts with thanksgiving. Boy, what a blessing it is when you have a thankful people. I was thinking this afternoon, you know, we've got Thanksgiving coming up. And normally the choir does a song, and I enjoy them doing that. So, Miss Joan, if you want to work on it, all right. Uh, and it's just simply give thanks. It's right in here. It's a very beautiful song. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. And we go through and think about the goodness of God. Now, I look back on my life. I see God's hand even when I was a lost man. God protected me from a lot of things. God protected me in my ignorance. And, and a lot of times, just to use a word that's not used a lot today, it's not popular in my stupidity. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. Listen, I was raised old school and I knew right from wrong. I knew what right was. Somebody said, hey, knowing right and wrong is not the hard thing. The hard thing is learning to do it. But I, I look back on my life and thank God for some things. That's what he's doing here. He's taking them from Abraham down to the covenant of the land to where God gave them the land. Now, I don't know if this was David or who it was that wrote this, but here they are now. They are controlling the land of Israel. They've set up the greatest kingdom on the face of the earth. David was the greatest king that Israel ever had. Solomon was the wisest king they ever had. I call him the wisest foolish man who ever lived. But at the same time, God gave them that land. So I want to break it down. One, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For what? For what you see. You look around. You, you see what God's done for you. Listen, you ought to be grateful for it. I thank the Lord today for sunshine. I thank God for a day that's not hot and a day that's not cold. Oh, we're going into the fall of the year. Somebody asked me the other day, said, won't you be glad when it's cold weather? I said, oh, no, wait a minute. I said, at my age, I don't know if I've got three months to give away. All right, so I'll just ease right on through there one day at a time. Uh, but listen, I thank God tonight for what he's done in my life, but I thank God for what I believe he's going to do even in my latter days. 
Just want to serve the Lord. Just I, God's been so good to us. I thank the Lord for come to the house of God. Listen, you know, just tell people how good God's been to you. Get up. Used to people did a lot of testifying in church. You don't hear a lot or as much of that anymore. I used to call it popcorn testimonies. Somebody to stand up, and then somebody else stand up, and somebody else stand up. I tell them I didn't start it. I'm not going to cut it off. We'll stay here as long as you get done. When you get done testifying, then we're going to preach. But he said, "Give thanks." Unto the Lord. Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights. James said that in verse number 17, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning with the Lord. Listen, God's always good, always has but in Bible college they used to holler out, Ain't God good? Ask that question. I'd always answer back, He's better than that. I'm talking about God. So the first thing he did, listen, he he lets them know where they came from, but he let them know that it was God that took them from the Ur of the Chaldees all the way into Canaan through what's called the fathers. So I believe worship has to do with a lot of calling on the Lord and giving him thanks. And then the second thing he did was worship is making known his deeds among the people. I talked about testimony a while ago. A lot of times when I'm witnessing to people, I just give them my testimony. One of the easiest ways to witness to people is tell them what God did for you. Just tell them what. People say, I don't know how to witness for the Lord. Tell them what God did for you. Hand them a track. Put that track in their hand. Tell them about the glorious salvation of the Lord. That, hey, boy, that, that change that God brought in your life. And even small children, listen, God changes their life. That's why they'll serve God on down the road. God changes their life. They're, 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 that human flesh, hey, we don't have to teach these young children to do wrong. We have to teach young children to do right. They've got a sin nature within them. So what we do is we teach them right from wrong. Somebody said the other day, well, you need to move more stuff up out of the hands of the children. No, you need to teach the children not to put their hands on it. Now, that's, that's, where you, that's where children learn, all right? I, I, I remember sometime, I don't know if it's Bob or Mike, looking down at something we told him not to touch, and no, no, he'd say, no, no. He'd slap that little hand, say, yeah, I'm going to pat that other side too. But listen, I'm talking about witnessing to people. Tell them how good God is. Boy, I, I enjoy doing that. I like to tell my testimony because that's, that's me. I can't tell yours, that's you. But if we walk among men, both family and acquaintances, listen, our, our families, I, my younger brother and my younger sister were watching Sunday school this morning. And I thank the Lord for that. They both said hello to me on Facebook or uh, whatever it is. Uh, my little sister's up in Michigan tonight. Uh, they're on vacation. They're up in Michigan. She's at their park someplace where they don't have a good signal, so she's got to go someplace to get a signal to text or call or do anything else. And I thank the Lord my brother was there. My brother's a Baptist deacon. He's a deacon in a Baptist church, but we're an hour ahead of him, so I, he can listen to Sunday school while he's allowing people to come on into the church and then he, they go to his services there. But I thank God for that. Listen, our opportunity to be a witness. Then in verse number two, by rejoicing, singing unto him, sing songs unto him, and talk ye of all his wondrous works. Now what's he talking about that verse? He's talking about not singing in church. He's talking about singing to God. Do you ever sing to God? I... I I enjoy doing that. I've made up a lot of songs. I could have probably made a lot of money off of them. I just, but the, by the next day, I couldn't remember what they were, but they sound pretty good. I just go down the road, just start making something up. Got the Lord on my mind, and I start singing a song, and sometimes I sing the old song. Went over to Brother Harold the other day, and uh, boy, I started singing, and he started singing with me. Brother Carroll's the same way. If you go, if you sing with them, They'll fall right in there and begin to sing with you. They, they remember these things. They, they understand these things. So singing unto the Lord. Hey, giving God praise. 
Learn to do that in your private life. If you'll sing in your private life, you'll sing in your public life. I remember years ago as a little boy, my dad, my dad liked to piddle in a workshop. Kind of remind me of Brother Cliff. Every time you look for dad, he's in the workshop. Always making something, doing something with his hands in there. And I remember walking down the garden path and going back out to the workshop and stopping and hearing my dad sing in Amazing Grace. Dad had a pretty good voice. I like that. He'd sing Amazing Grace. Listen, worship one is giving thanks unto God and calling upon his name and making known his deeds to the people, but also singing unto him. He said, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous work. Now look at verse 3. Glory ye in his name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Glory in the name of God. Boy, at the name of Jesus, aren't you glad you bowed? Amen. He said every knee should bow. He said every knee should bow. Every tongue should confess. There's a lot of people who won't do that anymore. But I'm talking about praising God, giving glory to God. I believe you give glory to God when you bless your food in a restaurant. I believe that glorifies God that people would see you bow your head. Barbara and I usually hold hands across the table and just thank God for the food. And when we do, we pray for you. We pray for our children, grandchildren. We pray for folks. And then we bless that food. And then, then we go to eating it. Now, I'm not talking about making a scene out of it. I remember a little preacher fellowship years ago. They had an old preacher. He was in his upper 80s. And they invited him to go eat with them. And they sat in a real busy restaurant. I mean, the waitress is up and down. And they said, Brother so-and-so, would you bless the food? He gets out of his seat and got down in the middle of the aisle and he started crying out to God just like there was nobody in there. And everybody standing with food in their hands and the, everybody at the other table was looking up. And that's the last time they asked him to bless some food. But I thought about he got their attention. He got their attention by doing that. Our worship is that we ought to glory in His name and let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. The four, and verse number four, look what he said. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His face forevermore. When the Bible talks about your face in the Old Testament, I think my mind goes back to Esther. When Esther came before the king, Mordecai told her what was happening and he told her, maybe God puts you here for such a time as this. And Esther went before her husband, the king, and if he did not extend his scepter to her, she would have been put to death. It's called seeking the face or the approval of someone in authority of great position. I thank God when he saw Esther, he extended that scepter out and he heard what she had to say and delivered Israel. Well, we find here, he said, seek the Lord and seek his strength and his face. I believe worship is seeking, seeking God's approval. I want my children to do things that approve. You understand? I want my grand... Hey, listen, I want to do things that reflect on my father. I want to do things that seek approval of God in those areas. I don't care so much what people think about me. I'm more interested in what God thinks about me than I am what people think about me. You know, sometimes people won't think very highly of you, if you're, especially if you're vocal. And I, I am, I'm vocal. I tell people, if you don't want to know the answer, don't ask the question. And when I give you the answer to the question, I'm going to give it to you out of the Word of God. I, I, it, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think or anybody else. It only matters what God says. So what we do, we answer those questions out of the Word of God. But he said, seek his approval, his face. Then in verse number five, he said, remember his marvelous works that he hath done and his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Now, he's getting ready to lead into Abraham in verse number 6. He told them, I want you to remember your past. Israel had an illustrious past. <clears throat> well, they had a great past. God brought Abraham out of the Ur of the Chaldees. They were outer worshipers. 
When he brought him out, he took him on up north of the Euphrates River. He remained there until God moved him down into the land of Canaan. When he came into the land of Canaan, he was a stranger in that land. But we find that they look, they look back at the marvelous works that God did and his wonders. Listen, bringing them out of Egypt, what a wonder that was. That God broke the staff, God broke the heart and the resistance of the most powerful nation on the face of the earth by one man. As he went in and just simply said, let my people go. Boy, God raised a man up that was hard. His heart was adamant as stone. You go to the book of Romans, chapter number, uh, I think it's chapter number 11, you'll find, or chapter 9, I think it is, you'll find he raised him up for that purpose. But he said, I want you to remember his works, look back on his wonders and his judgments. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye chosen of Jacob, his chosen. He said, I want you to remember, he's the Lord our God and his judgments are in all the earth. Verse 8, he hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. God made a covenant with me. He made that covenant, I think it'll be 46 years this coming November. I do not know what the date was. I it may not have been in November, but it's around November time of the year. I know it was on a Sunday night. I know that I was sitting on the back pew of a Baptist church about 14, 000, 1, to 1,400 people deep. And I remember for the first time in my life, I got lost without God. First time in my life that I really knew that I was lost without God. And that night I did something. Uh, I, I gave my heart to the Lord. But let me tell you something. God did something in my life. He turned me inside out, upside down, son. I mean, you're talking about doing a work on a young couple. Six years later, Barbara got saved. But I thought about the blessing. The blessing of us remembered what he has done for us. Remember and how he brought us here. I, you know my story, and I'm not going to give it again. I want to go to New Hampshire. Didn't want to stay in South Carolina. God knew exactly where I needed to be this night. I am in the perfect will of God in my life in this pulpit. I don't like to preach anyplace else. I'll preach if they ask me to preach. Listen, I'm a pastor. I'm a full-time pastor. I don't know what it is about that that some people don't understand. I am full-time. I am paid a full-time salary. I owe my life and all of my energies to my church. And that's where my heart is tonight. I'm talking about what God had done. How in the world could God take me from where I was and put me to where I am? You're talking about a miracle of the grace of God. That God would do such a thing for an old uh, poor uh, coal miner uh, from western Kentucky. Man, uh, yeah, I love that verse of scripture. It said he, he pulled me out of a horrible pit and put me on a rock and established my going and put a song in my a mouth and praise in my lips and but hey I thank God for something tonight. God didn't leave me where he found me. He had work for me to do that I didn't know anything about. The night I got saved, the only thing I was going to do was work there in the mines for the rest of my life. My heart was made up. That's what we were going to do. We were going to raise our children there. Our family was there. Boy, did God ever have another plan for me? Hey, I'm just talking about worship. You see where God brought you from to where you are today. You see the grace of God that God manifested in your life and changed your life. We remember by praising the Lord. Psalms 103, praising Him, blessing Him. Glory to God tonight for His goodness and His mercy. He's remembering things and then he's making these things known, his deeds among the people. Now when he's talking about the people, he's talking about the people of Israel. The Bible calls them not a people, but the Bible calls them the people. So he's talking about his own people. Uh, God could have sent me to a mission field, I would have gladly gone. I remember I got peace about that years ago. I told the Lord, wherever you want me to go and however long you want me to stay, I'm glad, I'll be glad to do that. Listen, God had to settle that in my heart on a Monday night, though. 
Because I was scared to death God was going to bring me to Bible college and then send me to Africa because I'd done met uh, some of them preachers up there. <laughs> Thought everybody in the world needed to be going to Africa. So I, hey, but I'll never forget on that Monday night, I missed that Bible conference that Monday night because we were unloading the truck. I could have stopped unloading that truck and unloaded that truck the next day. But I thank God that night he dealt with my heart about that. And I said, Lord, if you want me to go to Africa, I'll go to Africa. If you want me to go anywhere, you just let me know where it is. And then I started kicking in the traces until God finally said, I want you down in Lawrence, South Carolina. And I said, say what? <laughs> hey, wrong answer. Amen. I'll never forget. I went back here in the back of the church. Right over here, matter of fact. That used to be a classroom right here. And I went back in the middle classroom, but it back off of that hall. I told Barbara, I'm going to go back here and pray a few minutes, and then I'll come back out. And I came back out, and I told her, I said, I'm going to preach here, and I'm going to move on. Boy, I really knew the will of God. <laughs> Two weeks later, I became the pastor here. But I'm talking about worshiping. What it, what's he doing? What? He wants you to see what God has done. If you don't see what God's done, then you'll see no future in what God will do. If God did all of this, and he did, then God can do all of this all the way home. I don't know when I'll die. Not worried about it. If I die tomorrow, hallelujah. I'm ready to go to the house anytime he gets there. I told the Lord the other day, I'm ready to go anytime you want to punch my ticket. You just do what you need to do, and I'm going to leave on out of here and shout glory all the way on the way up. But I do know one thing. If we remember what he did and praise him for what he did, then we will eventually praise him for what he's going to do in the future. That's what worship's about. We came here tonight to praise the Lord. Came here tonight just to give God the glory. And I'm glad this psalmist did that. He gave glory to God for what God had done. But he said, I want you to tell it to the people. I want the people to hear so that they understand and know. And then they can praise the Lord also. Amen. We're going to stand tonight and have an invitation. You need to come tonight, you come. Remember what?